I'm going to be looking at the purple bottle in the painting we've been working on this week. And as I described to you, so this is not finished yet, but it's at a stage where I can start glazing. If you paint things too light, lighter than they need to be, then when you put the glaze on, hopefully it gets to exactly what we want uh, the color to be in terms of its darkness and lightness. So you can see that this is actually much, much lighter than it is uh, in the image we've been working with. Uh, this orange is way too bright and saturated, uh, so that's fine. The glaze is what we're going to put on here. Uh, that's going to tone all that down and make it slightly darker. Now the problem is in the image, this is a very intense purple. Uh, with the colors we have in our basic palette, which I'm assuming um, most people only have those colors, the closest we can get to a nice purple is uh, ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson, which isn't the same purple you're going to see in the picture, okay? It's going to be slightly duller. So let's just see what that looks like. So I take some alizarin, I bring it over to my ultramarine, and then I add glaze to thin it out. Okay, let's get a little more alizarin in the mix there. So you make a nice kind of purple, and then literally just put over the whole thing to see what it looks like. Okay, and it's not bad, but it doesn't have the same punch that, you know, a correct sort of purple would in this case. And so if you go back to the color lecture, where I talked about the fallacy of primary colors, um, if you re I, I didn't want you to go out and buy any other colors because of the, the cost involved. But if you really want a vibrant secondary color, whether it's a purple or a green or an orange, you really have to buy them. Because if you mix them, you just don't get the same uh, high chroma interesting effect. Okay, so I'm just going to do, I'll do this and then I'll, I'll see if I'll take it off maybe. So I put it down with a brush. And now I'm going to wipe it with a brush, okay? So without letting it dry or going over it again, this is the second method. You can actually just come in and wipe the whole thing. And as you keep going, the exact same thing happens. The paint thins, it starts to dry, gets a little tacky. And I'm going to change position with my finger in the cloth, wipe it again. Now, because we're painting on color, it's more intense than the demo I just did on the black and white object. All right. With that object, if you want it to get to be a really rich color, you're going to have to do several layers. We could get away with one, maybe two layers because we're painting right on top of color. And that's it's not bad, okay? It's 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 purple. It's doable. Um, you can then come in and just highlight where you want the extra lights to be by again wiping off in that place. Let's say there. Uh, let's come down here. Take some of that off. And so we can start to manipulate it and then we can paint right back on top of it uh, and play with it. Okay, so but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens if you have the correct uh, colors. And so I highly recommend, uh, if you can afford it, to go out and get those three other colors, the magenta, uh, the permanent green, and the cat orange. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm taking it off. So and that's the nice thing about glazes. You just put it on. If you don't like it, just take it off. As long as your painting underneath is dry, which it always should be, it's not a problem. So now I'm going to just come in here. And now you don't want to rub too hard because you're going to get this effect. Uh, this is because the light color I put down wasn't 100% dry. So when I rubbed it with solvent, you can see the texture of the canvas coming through. So wiping off is something you don't want to do too hard or too often. I'm just doing it uh, as a demo. So what I'm doing now is I'm using Cornacridone Magenta. Windsor & Newton sells it. It's a nice, vibrant, uh, violety magenta. And that's pretty close to the color we want. Uh, add a little bit of more blue to it, but there's enough blue in the painting already. So let's just see what that, whoops. See what that looks like by itself. So clean my brush, take some liquid, 
see that color, see the vibrancy of that color compared to this. I smear that out. Yeah. You can't mix two colors and go higher chroma. It's just not possible. Um, it's, they're gonna dull because of the nature of the subtractive uh, mixing. But if I put this on just pure like it is, because I have enough blue happening, we're getting the actual color we want. So for those of you doing this particular image for portfolio, don't worry about it. The other version using the magenta and the ultramarine and blue is totally fine. I'm just showing you what happens and look at that look at the difference it's really really strong it just just sings and jumps off the canvas so i'm just gonna get it all in here okay so you probably noticed something happened up there with blue there must have been blue in my brush so I'm just going to come in, take that ultramarine blue off. Come back, clean my brush even more, get some more glaze. You see the dullness just outside the bottle here. That's the background uh, that got painted over when I was lightening the bottle. So I'm gonna go to the background and change that, but not right now. Like I said, this painting is not finished. I just wanted to get the glazing demo in here so you have time to do it. Okay, so there we go. Now, instead of using the rag, I'm just using the brush. And because this bottle goes in one direction, there's often vertical lines, any brush strokes going vertically are actually not going to be a problem. Okay, so more vibrant purple. Now, if I want to manipulate the lights, all I do is I, I dry my brush and I come in and it lifts off a very small amount. I can keep wiping. But you don't want to take too much off because then you lose the vibrancy of that color. Let's see, I want to put a little bit more in here. Okay, so I can play with that. I can manipulate it. I can let that dry. I can do another layer. I can paint my highlights back in. I can touch things up. Great. I can also use this glazing technique to manipulate things. So let's say I've got the uh, purple areas on my cloth. Um, I don't have the image right now, so I'm not quite sure where they are, but let's pretend one was right here. I could just glaze that light right there on my cloth. Maybe even, let's say here, I'm just making this up. Maybe lighten that a little bit. So you can just put, use the glaze to just put slight little touches in here. Um, let's say there was purple down here somewhere. I could just put the glaze right there. Again, I'm just making this up. And that'll give me a slight little purple blush in that corner. All right, so anywhere you see it in the picture, you can just use a glaze to put it down. If you put it down and you've made a mistake and it's not in that spot or you've done it too hard, just get it wet. Take a clean rag and just wipe it off and it's gone. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. I don't have the image. I'm not sure where the purple lights are going and just take that off. So I can put purple anywhere. Um, I could do that with any, any of the colors as long as I'm working with transparent colors. Now, I didn't have you buy all the possible transparent colors. So yellow, for instance, the ones that we have are not transparent. If you wanted a transparent yellow, then an Indian yellow. Um, is a good 
oil color. All right. All right, good luck with it.